Yeah, it, it is a little surprising. I think this is part of the market cycle of complacency where the markets overall, we just came off of this big drop from 2021 and investors are starting to say, okay, the Fed may be looking to kind of pause here. They're still likely to hike at least one more time, but ultimately the markets are getting ready for this pause. And I think that's drawing a lot of investors into the market. And you kind of create this scenario where investors, like you said, are ignoring the Fed. The Fed has said there's gonna be a minor recession. The concerning part to me is that if they said minor, and last time, remember, they said, you know, we would have this minor kind of issue with, with inflation, right? We were going to see transitory inflation. It ultimately turned out to be horrendous. And so I am concerned that investors are mispricing assets here. We see Pepe on the crypto side. We see the crypto runs going on again. And this is telling me that there's a lot of risk in the system. Bitcoin's decline on Monday contrasts with the asset's lack of movement over the past six weeks. Bitcoin recently fell nearly 4% over the past 24 hours to trade just above $28,000, but spent a good portion of the day below that level. The decline follows lower prices in two of the last three trading days, but prior to these drops, starting in mid-March, BTC price fluctuations have been more uneventful. Hello and welcome to Money Talks. In today's video, founder and chief market strategist at InTheMoneyStocks.com and verified crypto investing, Gareth Soloway updates about Bitcoin's current market standing, the final bottom in crypto, and his outlook for Bitcoin in 2023. Yeah, I think, I think the Fed is starting to pay attention. We saw the last jobs number getting a little bit on the weaker side. It came in slightly lower than expectations. We've seen inflation coming down, and we've seen the banking crisis really continue with today's takeover by JP Morgan of FRC. So I think the Fed is aware of this. They don't want to kind of stop too quickly on the hiking side, so they're going to likely hike by 25 basis points next week. But I do think it's then open-ended, and the Fed may be looking to pause. The issue for the markets is that the market has always, and investors have always looked at it and said, hey, the Fed will bail us out if we get into trouble. The problem is in the past 15 years, inflation was sub 2%. We're now at a point where inflation is north of 3, 4, 5%, and the Fed can't bail us out. And I think that's where the mispricing of these equities is coming in, where you have NVIDIA where it is, you have Apple, you have Microsoft. All of these sky-high valuations are not pricing in a recession uh, later this year. I, I think the stagflation is a big issue, right? If we look at how stagflation attacks people where they're not getting more pay, they're actually in a recession or the, the economic growth is stalling out, but inflation is continuing up, that makes it very problematic for them to start spending more money as inflation uh, on goods continues to cost them more money. So I think that's the bigger problem here, and I do see that as a forecast of what could happen in the second half of the year where we still see inflation, even for the next couple years, maintaining three, four percent, but you do have a recession that drags on for multiple years without the Fed stepping in. And again, this is the kicker is that investors continue to think that the Fed will bail us out of every situation. But we clearly hear from uh, from Jerome Powell that that's not likely the case unless things get really, really bad. The largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization was recently trading at about $27,800, down over 5% over the past 24 hours, according to Coindesk data. BTC had been hovering around $28,500 as U.S. markets opened and it was announced banking giant JP Morgan had won the auction to purchase First Republic assets. San Francisco-based First Republic is the fourth bank to fail in the past two months, following Silvergate, Silicon Valley, and Signature Banks. Ether, ETH, the second largest cryptocurrency by market capitalization, followed a similar pattern to Bitcoin, dropping more than 4% to change hands at around $1,813 Monday afternoon. Investors will be eyeing the Federal Open Market Committee, FOMC Monetary Policy Meeting, which begins Tuesday to decide whether to boost interest rates and by how much. The CME's FedWatch tool currently sets the probability of a 25 basis point BPS increase at more than 94%, which would boost the target range to between 5% and 5.25%. Some analysts expected the decision may cause price fluctuations in the crypto market. After a breakout, it's important to pay attention to pullbacks to gauge the buying strength remaining. Bitcoin mining equipment and hosting provider Blockware Solutions analysts wrote in a newsletter on Friday. 
In this case, BTC flashed some pretty bullish signals as buyers quickly stepped in at the 50-day, simple moving average. Blockware Solutions analysts said BTC has strong resistance between $30,000 and $31,000, although they noted that it's not unreasonable to assume that the FOMC policy decision could make or break current BTC strength. Yeah, and that's a great question. So I think for me, it's looking at kind of defensive plays, right? You look at plays like gold, gold miners. Miners took a big hit last year relative to the price of gold because inflation was so high. Their input costs were going up, but the price of gold was not matching that inflation. Now gold has started to take off. We've seen gold trading close to those all-time highs. I think gold does break out in the second half of the year. And I think you look for defensives that haven't run. You know, we've seen the McDonald's have, have run already. We've seen GE is sky high. That's kind of being played as a defensive. We've even seen Apple as being a defensive. I think you start looking for the biotechs like the Amgens. People will still need drugs if we go into a recession. I think that's the angle. Play the beaten down defensive names and ultimately the gold and gold miners. Yeah, and this is amazing. If you if you do, and you guys are showing it right now, if you look at the S&P 500 on a weekly or monthly chart, it matches perfectly up with just after the euphoria phase, that sideways to up consolidation that we've seen in the S&P for the last really six to eight months. And that tells me we're in this what's called complacency stage. And it's just before the roll off of the cliff, which comes into that 20% downside projection in the market. So I think you could be looking at six to 12 months of pain in this market coming forward. And investors need to take heat. You're seeing things again like risk taking in the crypto markets, in the stock market with sky high valuations, and that is not the sign of a bottom in a stock market or in the crypto markets. It's a sign of a near-term top. Business intelligence platform MicroStrategy has reiterated its commitment to its Bitcoin investment strategy after turning its first quarterly profit since 2020. The Michael Saylor founded firm went back into the green in the first quarter of 2023 with a profit of $94 million, which was largely attributed to a one-time income tax benefit of $453.2 million. In addition to the tax benefit, the firm cashed in $121.9 million in revenue, up 2.2% from the same time last year. Fong Li, the firm's CEO, explained in the May 1st statement that MicroStrategy's conviction in its Bitcoin investment strategy is as strong as ever. We remain disciplined on costs while investing in growth, and we will continue to execute our dual strategy of growing our business intelligence software business and acquiring Bitcoin for the future, he added. So, what are your thoughts about Gareth Soloway's prediction? Tell us in the comments. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe. See you soon with the next video. Thank you so much for watching.